Relays like this one can use a lot of power when they're on all the time. Now it's well known that typically the holding current, the current required to keep the relay on once it's been actuated, is less than the pickup current, the current required to actuate it in the first place. So a good question is, can we devise a simple circuit that will switch to the holding current once the relay's been actuated? I think we can. Let's experiment and give it a try. I decided to start by characterizing the relay. So I wanted to find out its response to different voltages and currents. And I wanted to find out if the impedance was the, always the same at different voltages. So I did this by connecting a power supply directly to the relay with a current meter in series and adjusting the voltage down from 5 volts every half volt and recording the voltage and current and when I got close to the dropout point by every 0.1 volt. And then I wrote down the results. You can see the results of this test here. So as the voltage is lowered, the impedance does apparently reduce somewhat, but it's fairly stable. And we can also see that the relay drops out or opens its contacts around 0.9 or 0.8 volts. So, in order to include a bit of a margin of safety, I decided to set the relay holding voltage to around 1.2 or 1.3 volts, or around 9 or 10 milliamps. So, I based my circuit design on this. So, here's our proposed circuit, and this is how it will work. When 5 volts is applied to the circuit, C1 will essentially be a short circuit, momentarily. Current will flow through C1, through R3, into the base of transistor Q1, and turn Q1 on. Q1 will apply a short circuit across R1. So at this point, current will fl flow through the relay coil, through this path, through the transistor to ground, and essentially will have almost the full 5 volts across the relay coil to initiate the relay coil closure. Now the combination of C1 and R2 here will have a time constant of approximately 0.1 seconds with a 100 microfarad capacitor. So after 0.1 seconds the capacitor will be mostly discharged through R2, the voltage here will drop, current flow through into Q1's base will drop, Q1 will turn off. And then at this point current will flow down this path through the K1 coil into R1 to ground. So at this point we'll have our holding current and our holding voltage governed by the value of R1. And down below here is how I calculated the R1 value. It's just a simple voltage divider. Recall that during our testing we had found that with about 1.2 volts on the relay coil that the impedance would be 128 ohms. So it's a simple calculation to determine that this resistor needs to be around 390 ohms in order to accomplish that. And with a total impedance of 518 ohms with the R1 and relay coil resistance added together, we get about 9.6 milliamps. So these values are right in our target range for where we want it to be. Notice also that I have an LED indicator attached to the relay contact so we can tell when the relay is on and off. And we have this diode here which is essential for protecting the transistor from the back EMF of the coil. When the coil is turned off, the magnetic field around the coil collapses and it generates a back EMF that will come back through this diode to the other side of the coil instead of going into the transistor. And notice also that I'm going to try several values of capacitor here. I'm not sure which value will work the best, but I suspect 100 microfarads. Okay, so now that we've designed the circuit, let's go build it on the breadboard and try it out. So 
So after completing the breadboard build, I first tried a 1 and 10 microfarad capacitor, but as you can see, they didn't work. So I tried a 100 microfarad capacitor and success. There's the relay operating. And notice that the relay operates repeatedly when we connect and disconnect the power and latches on when we connect the power permanently. So that tells me that we have our time constant about right. So now let's take a look at the current. Here it is, it's around 9.5 milliamps, which is exactly where we want to be. So everything's working. Let's just take a quick look at the approximate power consumption. So you can see that with just five volts applied to our relay, we're using about 183 milliwatts. But with our circuit in place, we're only using about 47 and a half milliwatts. So this is an approximate 75% reduction in power, which I think is pretty impressive. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe in YouTube and Instructables. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.